Hey, learning coaches. So I wanted to make a video to help make your life a little bit easier when it comes to teaching division to your fourth grader. I will tell you, division is one of the hardest concepts for fourth graders to understand in our math curriculum. The reason for that is twofold. First of all, just developmentally, it's just a tough skill for fourth graders. I used to teach a fourth and fifth grade class when I was in brick and mortar school. And so um, the students would be with me for fourth and fifth grade for math. And um, I would see in fourth grade, they're struggling. They're like, Mrs. Long, this is so hard. And you know, they're like wanting to cry because it's so hard. And then they'd get to fifth grade and they do division, same division. And they're like, wow, this is really easy. What was I thinking? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, you're just ready for it now. So, you know, sometimes our brains are just not ready for something and then eventually they are. And so I don't want you to get frustrated because your fourth grader is struggling because it's really, really common for fourth graders to struggle with division. The other side of that is division is really heavy in multiplication. And if your kiddo is still struggling to memorize their multiplication facts and understand multiplication, this is like a harder version of it. And so they they have to use it in a kind of more in-depth way. And that's tough. If you don't understand it to begin with, it's hard to take it a step further. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you two strategies that I want you to try with your kiddo, okay, in helping them to understand division. Now, these strategies do actually go with their division lessons, okay? So these specifically go with lesson five, which is all about division as sharing. This is a great strategy for your kiddos who are visual and kinesthetic learners. And a lot of kids are visual or kinesthetic learners. I, I have not met too many, especially younger kiddos who are really auditory learners. And auditory learners are gonna be able to pick up on any of these too, is because you're gonna, they can listen to it being explained. Okay, so if, you, if your kiddo's an auditory learner, maybe have them watch this video with you so they can hear it, and then watch the video that I made for them about division as sharing. Okay, it's a great strategy because you see what you're actually doing. And I'm gonna explain that a little bit more when I get into the strategy. The other strategy is a strategy that I love. It's one of, it's my favorite strategy for doing long division. And it is called two different things. It's either called the area model. That's what I hear it called more often, but our curriculum actually calls it partial quotients. It's the same thing because you're finding partial quotients, but um, you're doing it in a really linear fashion where when you're doing a standard, um, the standard algorithm or the old school method of division, you're kind of jumping all over the problem. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of steps and it can be tough for kids to remember. But when you're doing the area model, you're doing the same steps, but you're doing them in a linear left to right fashion. And that's much more the way that they think because that's how they're reading and that's how they do everything is left to right. So instead of going up, down, up, down, up, down, they just work left to right through the problem. It's the same exact strategy. And you'll see that when I get into it, um, that you're actually doing the same thing. Sorry, I have allergies and my nose is like super, super itchy today. I can't make it stop. All right. Um, but let's let's go ahead and go, get into these two strategies i don't want this video to be too long but i do want to make sure that you know how to help and support your student in division okay so the first model is division as sharing so if i look at a division problem let's say i have 473 divided by three all right, 473 divided by three. Well, we remember that this right here is the total amount we start with. And so let's, if you have the place value blocks, you can pull out this many, 473. Or if you don't have the place value box, you can draw it, right? So we are gonna draw squares for our hundreds. So we have 400, all right? And then I'm gonna draw just lines for my tens. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And I'm going to draw dots or you could draw little squares. I think dots are easier to draw. So I just do that for my ones. So one, two, three. All right. The three, that's our dividend. The three tells me how many groups I need to make. So I'm going to draw three groups. All right, let me move this over a little bit so it's, yeah, you can see it better. All right, and now division simply means we're taking the number and we're putting it into the groups. So if you think about how you would pass out like a deck of cards, you get one for you, 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 one for you. And we want the exact same amount to be in each group. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do to start out with is I am going to, and I'm going to use a different color for this, I am going to just distribute first my hundreds, then my tens, then my ones into my groups. So I have one here, and I cross it off as I go. One for you, one for you. All right, I have one left over, and I'm going to worry about that here in just a minute, okay? But I, I can't put it into a group at this point in time. Now I'm going to do my tens. So I go one here, there. You see, I'm just kind of crossing them out as I go. All right. I, sometimes if I'm getting kind of low on the amount, I look out to see, well, I need, oh, I know I need at least three. I have four, so I'm good. Okay. So I can go one, each group can get another one, two, three. All right. And now I only have one left, so I've got to leave it. All right. And now I'm going to do my ones. I have three ones. So I go one, two, and three. All right, so what do I still have left to distribute? I have 100 and I have a 10. Sorry, I just read. I'm making a lot of videos today, so my throat's like getting super dry. All right, well, I can split these up, right? So let me, let me start by splitting up my 100. I always like to start with the biggest and then work the way smallest. So this would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. All right, and then I still have this one from over here, so I'm just going to move it over. All right, now let me just distribute again. Okay, so we have 10 there, there, there. Keep going, and keep going. And it's helpful to do this with pencil because sometimes you realize you don't realize that you're almost out, and then you're like, oh wait, I shouldn't have put those in there. Um, but I'm just trying to be really careful with my pen here. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right, I know I have two left and I have three boxes. So I can't, or three circles, so I can't put those in. So now, what am I gonna do? Well, these can be ones, right? I can split their tens, there's two tens left, so that would be 10, 20, or 20 ones. So now I'm gonna do the same thing I did here. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And I'm going to distribute those into my circle. So I have one, two, three. Oops, my bad. See, again, why it's helpful to do it with pencil. All right, so I just have to be careful. I did four. Why well, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, so 18, and then I have two left over. I can't split these up any further, so that is just going to become my remainder. Now, you notice I lost count. I was doing it kind of slowly because I was trying to explain it as I was going, but then I lost what track of what I was doing. So it's, it's really helpful to be able to actually, again, using the manipulatives and physically doing it or doing it with pencil in case you make a mistake because it's easy to erase. I never recommend doing math in pen. I just do it in pen because it's easier for you to see on the video. Okay, now, well, what's my answer? My quotient stands for the amount in each group. Each group has the same amount in it. I have 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So I have 150, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I have 157 in this group, 157 in this group, 157 in this group, and then I have two left over. So I've just done 473 divided by three without actually doing any division. I just drew pictures and split them. Okay, so if your kiddo is having a hard time with multiplication and division, this strategy is great, right? Because they're just drawing pictures and they're splitting it up in between the pictures. And, and again, physically having those manipulatives is really good. There's also a digital website and I'm gonna link both of the, the link to the manipulatives that you can print out. I would recommend printing them on cardstock or laminating them if you have that option. Printing them on regular paper is fine too, but just it just makes them a little bit more durable. Um, and then um, 
So I'm going to link that. And I'm also going to link um, to a virtual manipulative page where you can do this with virtual manipulatives, okay, um, onto the bulletin board and where the bulletin board for digit is, okay? So you can have access to both of those to do those with your kids if you want to have them physically do it. Again, they can draw it just like I did as well, all right? But this strategy is great because you're just, you're drawing your dividend and then you're distributing each part. So you're distributing the hundreds and then the tens and then the ones evenly into the group. And you notice when I had leftovers, I split them into smaller pieces as if I could. So hundreds would go to tens, tens would go to ones, thousands would go to hundreds if you're in, if you're doing a number in the thousands. But it's really easy to do and it's really easy to see how you're dividing. This is kind of building the concept of division. Okay, so now after your kiddo does this a little bit, they can see, hey, I see what I'm doing when I'm dividing. And we always start with the biggest number for division anyway. So you're always going to want to start with your biggest place value because once we move into the area model and once we move into the standard algorithm, you always start with the biggest place value there as well. All right. So now let's look at this same problem. I'm going to do 473 divided by three and we're going to do it with the area model. All right. Or again, this is called partial products in the math book. So 473 divided by three. All right. For this strategy, you're going to have your student draw a box and the box is going to have the same number of sections that your dividend has in place value. So I have a three digit number, which means I need a three section box. All right. All right, because my sections stand for my place value. And I write my divisor over here on the outside. Now in this problem, we are doing actual division. So this is where I would stop and ask your student, can you skip count by threes? Can you go three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21? Can you do that all the way up to 30? If the answer is no, that's okay. All right. You're going to have your student make a quick list of their three times tables out to the side. And I let them use their fingers. I, you know, we have fingers on our hands. We always have them there. They're always handy. And I, as a math teacher, and I've been a math teacher forever, as a math teacher, I do math on my fingers all the time. I don't think that there's a problem with it at all. All right. So we are just going to write three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And that's where we can stop at 10 times 30. Okay. And then we're going to take our dividend and we're going to put it in our first box. Now these boxes stand for place value. All right. So this is hundreds, tens, ones. We go in order, right? Hundreds, tens, and ones. So because we're dealing with hundreds, I'm going to actually take my finger and cover up everything after the hundreds place. All right, so I'm only looking at my hundreds place. And I wanna think three times what gets me as close to four as possible without going over. So now I can look over here at my list and I see three times one is three, three times two is six, that's too big. So only one time, right? So I write that one up at the top. And remember this is the hundreds place. So I have to add two zeros on the end of it, all right? Now, I'm going to multiply my 3 times 100. Remember, 3 times 1 is 3 with two zeros, and then subtract. All right, and I have 3, I have 7, and I have 1. I have 173 left, and that's going to move over into my tens box. All right. Now I'm going to cover up everything after the tens place. If you are a math person, you're probably seeing how this really closely relates to the standard algorithm. We're just doing it sideways. Okay. Um, I'm covering everything after the tens place. And I want to think three times what gets me as close to 17 as possible without going over. And I talk this through, like these are the words I say when I teach this in the classroom. All right. So I go back over to my list. All right. Well, I don't have 17 exactly on my list but I have 15 and I have 18. 18 is too big, it can't be bigger, so I have to go with 15. Well, that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, 
And remember, this is my tens box, hundreds, tens. So I add one zero on the end of it because 10 has one zero on the end of it. And now I'm going to multiply 50 times 3. Well, I know 5 times 3 is 15. And then I have my zero on the end. And I subtract. So I get 3 and I get 2. And now I'm going to move 23. Sorry, I wrote that too a little funky. 23 over into my last box. All right, and I want to think how many times, I'm not going to cover anything up because this is my ones box, hundreds, tens, ones. This is my ones box. There's nothing after the ones place, so there's nothing left to cover up. I have to use all of it. Okay, so how many times can three go into 21 or three times what, or sorry, 23. How many times can three, let me try and say this again. Sorry, guys. Again, lots of videos today. My brain is like, whoop. <laughs> okay, so three times what gets me as close to 23 as possible without going over. Again, I'm going to use my list over here. I see I have 21 and I have 24. All right, well, 24 is too big because 24 is bigger than 23. So I have to go with 21. All right, how many down is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I write my seven at the top. All right, and I'm going to multiply three times seven. And that equals 21. And then I subtract and I have two left over. That is my remainder because I have no place else left to move it. Okay, so I'm just write remainder two on the outside. So my quotient is right up here on the top, 157, and I have a remainder of two. Okay, so those are my two strategies that I wanted to show you guys. All right, the first one is really, really visual, and your student doesn't actually have to do any math other than splitting the hundreds into tens and the tens into ones. All right, this is this is very visual strategy. If your students are really struggling, I would stick with this until they're able to really proficiently do this. If they're getting this, they're like, I want to take it a step further with them. That's where we want to move on to this. And then when I do the last video that your students watch, um, if you want to watch that one with them, you'll see how this relates to our long division strategy that we learned when we were in school. We're actually doing the exact same thing. And you probably even noticed that I was saying, how many times does this go into this? And then I was multiplying and then I subtracted and then I brought over instead of brought down. It's the same strategy. This just by going left to right, it makes it so much easier for students to understand. And I see students like try to do long division and numbers are going all over the place. And it's like, we've just taken numbers and thrown them up in the air and see where they landed. And then we, of course, are getting the question wrong when then but then they take it like this and it's like oh yeah okay well we're done here so we move over we're done here so we move over that makes sense okay so again it's just kind of trying to think of think like a fourth grader and see how your fourth grader and remember every fourth grader thinks differently but how your fourth grader thinks through the problems all right if you guys have any questions and you're struggling with this with your student please 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 let um, myself or mrs mitchell know and we will be more than happy to help you out we want you to feel comfortable we want you to feel confident in helping your student with math we know math can be a really tricky topic but using some of these strategies are is really really helpful for fourth graders because this is kind of more in line with how their brains are working at this point developmentally and then eventually they get into being able to do the more conceptual version of it where it's not just so quite so visual all right i am um, i hope you guys have a wonderful day and if you need anything let us know bye